So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this fountain pen. It's a Schaefer's Snorkel Filler. It's a, a really interesting vintage pen. Uh, and I'll get into all the history and stuff on unsharpened.com. It's a little bit long-winded to cover here. But I did want to spend some time looking at the pen's very interesting filling mechanism. As for the pen itself, it was a higher-end fountain pen back in the day. It still is a nice fountain pen. It has a sort of high-end fancy plastic that they used to use back then with the, the Parker 51 and so on. And then it has a really nice looking metal cap. Some cool lines here, that signature dot that Schaefer uses. It has a, a kind of a contrasting metal clip that's actually spring loaded. It is a very strong spring. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's from age, but it's spring loaded. It's quite nice. You see that now and then with uh, Lamy and some other brands. Some more uh, gold, silver mix there. Twist on cap. Has a 14K nib. You can see Schaefer's made in the USA. 14K. Kind of bi-color, gold and silver. It's all gold, I believe. I think it's just a different coating. And it has that wraparound style, which is quite nice. A tubular nib. I believe some brands would call it. I'm not sure if Schaefer's ever did. Uh, it's a little messy. It is a vintage pen, and I have been using it. I just cleaned it out recently, and I wanted to show everyone the fill mechanism. This is kind of what gives the pen its name, is a snorkel filler. And you can see right here, there's a little tube, and that is the snorkel. And basically what it did was the snorkel can extend, and uh, that way you could fill the pen without getting the whole nib uh, all uh, covered in ink. So if you were to have to fill the pen on the go, you wouldn't have to have a bunch of towels with you or some paper rags or napkins or, you know, anything like that. You could fill the pen and keep writing. This is back when obviously a fountain pen was something used every day, not something used just for the, uh, <laughs> the pleasure of it. And you use this mechanism in the back here. So you can unscrew this and you could see the snorkel extending. Just show that mechanism again. There's the snorkel. It's in its resting position now, and you can extend it. It has to extend past the bottom of the nib so that it could go into the ink itself and not get all this stuff covered in ink, particularly this feed part. As you unscrew this more, you expose the mechanism I'm pulling it out now. As you pull it out, you're uh, pushing air out of the system. And now you pull air in. And now you screw it back down. When you screw it back down, the snorkel goes back into its home and you have your pen again. And at this point, all of the nib would have stayed relatively dry, uh, hopefully entirely dry if you did it properly. I'll try to do a quick demonstration. I wouldn't profess to be a, uh, a master of this pen type, but I've been using this pen for a couple of weeks now, maybe a couple of months on and off, of course. I think I'm more or less starting to figure it out. So we'll extend it. Pull the tip up or pull the top up. You can see bubbles coming. Presumably that means air was being expelled and ink was being brought in. And now tap that off. The ink pickup should be minimal. Obviously there's some on the snorkel itself, none on the nib. So should be minimal. So at this point, presumably since you were on the go, you would have been using the pen. It would have been wet. We'll have to give this one a few minutes. Okay, it's a few minutes later and see we have a nice clean pen here. writing nicely. This is just printer paper. So the line is going to look very 
broad, even though I believe this pen is a medium. It doesn't actually say. It has that cool upturned nib, which is kind of one of Schaefer's trademarks from back in the day. Uh, it has a name that I can't quite recall. I'm sure people out there in the comments will know. And yeah, it's writing nicely. This is just uh, nothing fancy. This is the uh, Mont Blanc Royal Blue Ink. Pretty easy one to find. It's a nice smooth rider. It's not like uh, super, super polished or mega smooth, but nice rider. Clearly, uh, the pen <laughs> writes well. No problems with that. So the ink was able to saturate the system. That sort of in and out mechanism where you're plunging the top, I think you want to do that a few times. You know, if you were out and about and using this pen as an everyday pen, maybe you'd only do it once just to keep things quick and easy uh, and, you know, make the chance of a mess minimal, but to get a, f a maximum fill, I think you want to do that a few times. Uh, the pen does not have a giant reservoir and clearly it's a pretty wet writer. Uh, so that's the, the snorkel filler. And being a, a vintage pen, with some interesting features. There's a lot of good information out about this one, about kind of why the nib is the way it is with that upturned design and, you know, more information about the uh, this line. This wasn't the only of the snorkel filler pens. Uh, Schaefer used a, a bunch of pens in, with this mechanism. I would say it's a really interesting relic. <laughs> I, I honestly think it's way more complicated than it needs to be. It, it was very cool to have one and I've enjoyed using it. But uh, these things are, are fairly expensive online. If you hunt for a deal, maybe you could find something in the $25 to $30 range, but a really good condition, one with a gold nib and, you know, recently restored filling mechanism all might cost upwards of $50 or $60. So interesting relic, and I'm, I'm really happy to have tested this one out, but uh, not really a pen. I would say, like, you got to go pick one of these up. But yeah, it's the snorkel filler from Schaefer's. A lot of fun. Thanks for watching.